And now I teach you one last thing about hydrogen NMR. Hydrogen atoms split the signal of neighboring hydrogen atoms. Now this might sound a little abstract, so here's an example. In this molecule, there are three hydrogens, A, and two hydrogens, B. Now because hydrogens, A, are next door to hydrogens, B, hydrogens, B will be split by hydrogens, A, and hydrogens, A, will be split by hydrogens, B. I know you're probably thinking I'm insane and that that sentence was really long, but let's consider an example to put all of this stuff together. So how do hydrogens A split the signals of hydrogens B and vice versa? I want you to remember the N plus 1 rule. Hydrogens A look next door and see two hydrogens B. You see that? The signal for hydrogen A then gets split as follows. Two plus one equals three. So the signal for hydrogens A will be a triplet. Similarly, hydrogens B look next door and see hy three hydrogens A. The signal for hydrogens B then will be three plus one is a quartet. You're welcome to repeat this slide if you want until you get this down. So now we're looking at this molecule, ethyl bromide. What can we say about its hydrogen NMR? Well, foremost, the signals of hydrogens B will appear further to the left, or further downfield, than the signal for hydrogens A, because hydrogens B are more positively charged, since they're closer to the electron withdrawing bromine. Does that make sense? Now, regarding integration, we can see that hydrogens A still integrate for 3, and hydrogens B will integrate for 2. So here's the hydrogen NMR for this compound. Which signals belong to which hydrogens? Well, as expected, hydrogens B once again appear further downfield right here. You'll also notice that hydrogens B are a quartet. Why are they a quartet? Because they look next door and see three hydrogens A, and we add one to it. Four means a quartet. Hydrogens A are further from this electron withdrawing bromine, so they'll appear further to the right or further upfield, right here. They are a triplet. Why? Because hydrogens A look next door and see hydrogens B, and there are two hydrogens B. I add one to it. That is a triplet. I hope that makes sense. So hydrogen NMR can be summarized as follows. One, each different kind or non-equivalent hydrogen gives a different signal. The more positively charged, the further to the left. Two, the heights of the integrals above each peak tell you the proportional number of hydrogens contributing to that peak. Three, hydrogens get split by neighboring hydrogens. To figure out the splitting, count all of the hydrogens next door in all directions and add one. Remember the following. Single bond land. 1 to 5 ppm, these are hydrogens stuck to sp3 hybridized carbons. Double bond land, 4 to 6 ppm, hydrogens stuck to sp2 hybridized carbons, specifically carbons that are double bonded to other carbons. Aromatic land, hydrogens stuck to benzene or other aromatic rings. Right around 10, phenol and aldehyde hydrogens. 12 to 14, carboxylic acid hydrogens and sometimes amides. And 0.5 to 5.5 ppm, alcohols and amine hydrogens. Here are some examples to consider. I want you to predict what the proton NMR spectrum should look like for each of the following molecules. I'll let you pause now and do this before you go on, since the answers to these are shown on the following slides. Here are the answers to the first two examples. Here are the answers to the next two examples. And here is the answer to the last example. I'll leave it to you to see if you can understand what we've just seen. And as always, if you have questions, you can ask me in class. We now arrive at carbon NMR, which is frequently called C13 NMR. C13 NMR works almost exactly the same as hydrogen NMR with the following notable differences. First, carbon NMR gives signals for carbon atoms instead of hydrogen atoms. Second, instead of going from 1 to 14 ppm like hydrogen NMR, Carbon NMR spectra usually go from 0 to about 220 ppm. Next, carbon NMR do not have integrals. 
And carbon nanomore signals do not usually have splitting because they're run in a way that decouples the splitting signals of adjacent atoms. So here's what you actually need to know about carbon NMR. One, the trend remains true that more positively charged carbon atoms appear further to the left. Two, for carbonyl signals, I want you to remember the following. Carbonyl carbons in carboxylic acids, esters, and amides appear usually between 160 and 180 ppm. Carbonyl carbons in aldehydes and ketones appear usually about 200 or above. Now sometimes there's some slight wiggle room there, but that's generally speaking a pretty good trend to follow. So where do different carbonyl signals appear on carbon NMR? Well, remember that the carbon NMR spectrum goes from about 0 to 220 ppm. So as I said in the previous slide, I want you to remember carboxylic acids, amides, and esters. These kinds of carbons that are highlighted in pink generally appear about 160 to 180 ppm. There's some slight wiggle room sometimes, but not a whole heck of a lot. Generally speaking, aldehyde and ketone carbonyl carbons will appear about 200 or above. And once again, sometimes you see some wiggle room, but not a whole heck of a lot. This is extremely important. So I hope that you remember these things, because they will become relevant shortly. Here are some examples to consider. I want you to predict what the carbon NMR spectrum should look like for each of the following molecules. I'll let you pause right now and do this before going on since the answers to, the, to, to these, this question is shown on the lecture slides that follow. Here is the uh, answer for the first two examples. Once again, you can see, and I hasten to point this out, that this carbonyl carbon right here belongs to an ester. Notice where it shows up? It shows up between 160 and 180 ppm. Here are the answers to the next two examples. I hasten to point out once again, this carbonyl carbon is a carboxylic acid. Where does it show up? Between 160 and 180 ppm. Here's a carbonyl carbon to an amide. Where does it show up? Between 160 and 180 ppm. Here are our next two answers. I hasten to point out again, this carbonyl carbon is an aldehyde carbon. Where does it show up? Above 200. This is a carbonyl carbon for a ketone. Where does it show up? Above 200. I emphasize that for a reason that will become apparent shortly.